In this tutorial, we will learn how to use more than one camera in a composition, in order to capture the scene from multiple angles. We have created some objects over here so that the camera can look at something, and the default camera is right here. We will capture part of the scene through this camera, and then we will add another camera, to capture the rest of the scene through the second camera. Let us first animate this default camera, along the y-axis, while capturing the scene. We are currently at frame number 1. Let us insert a keyframe for the Y location of the camera. We will now move the camera along the Y axis for a few seconds. Let us go to frame number 100. We will then change the location of the camera somewhere like here. And we have to also keyframe its Y location again for this frame. Next, we want the camera to constantly look at our objects while moving. So, go to the Object Constraint tab and add one Track to Constraint. Then for the target object, please pick up the eyedropper tool and select any one object in the scene, it can be this rock. Now, the camera will always look at our objects while going along its path. Let us see this in action. Cool. We will also verify this through the camera view mode. Let us go to the first frame and start the animation. So, the default camera is capturing the scene as expected. We can also turn on the rendered view mode. We will now add one more camera into the scene, and see how it works. So go to the Add menu, and add another camera from here. So, we have the second camera added here, which is named as, Camera 001. Let us say, we want to get this camera active from frame number 120. So, go to, Frame Number, 120. From here, let us capture the scene vertically, so the camera should move in a vertical line. To do that, for the current frame, let us move the camera upward, somewhere here. It will capture the scene from this height. We can move it slightly towards the back. It will slowly come down while capturing the scene. So, we have to insert a keyframe, for the current Z location of this camera. Then it should slowly come down. So, we will go to frame number 250. And, we will move the camera down to a position like this. We have to again insert a keyframe here. Now, while this camera moves, we want it to also look at our objects. So in the Object Constraint tab, we have to add one track to Constraint. And for the target object, like before, we will select the rock. So the camera will look at our objects during its course of movement. Now go to the first frame. We will verify how the cameras move throughout the animation. The first camera moves along the Y-axis, from frame number 1 to 100. After that, the second camera starts moving down, and it continues until the end of the animation. The most important point is, only one camera can be the active camera at a time. And when we render the scene, Blender will take the output from that particular camera, which is the active camera for a given frame. So, we want the first camera to be the active camera, up to frame number 120. At this frame, we want to switch from this camera to the second camera. To do that, we have to open a timeline editor, which looks like this, showing the composition timeline. If you do not have it already, open an editor and choose timeline from here. And we will get this thing. Now here, at frame number 120, we want to switch over to the second camera. So go to the marker menu and click on Add Marker. While the second camera is selected, once again go to the marker menu and select Bind Camera to Markers. So the second camera will be placed here, at frame number 120. And similarly, we want to place the first camera at the beginning of the animation. So, go to the start of the scene. Then go to Marker, and add a new marker. Then select our first camera, go to the Marker menu again, and select Bind Camera to Markers. We have now have our first camera at frame number 1, and the second camera at frame number 120. So the camera switch will happen right at frame number 120. Let us go to the camera view mode and verify the result. If we start the animation from the beginning, we can see the first camera capturing the scene as expected, and it will continue till frame number 120. The output will then switch over to the second camera, and it will continue until the last frame of the composition. So this way, you can use two different cameras in a single scene, and it can add much more realism and dimensions to your output. Now, there are two more things to discuss. First, you may not like an abrupt switch from one camera to the other. You may want some kind of a transition effect, like a fade-in or a fade-out between the views. Let us go back 
and open the timeline editor once more. Right now our first camera is active from frame number 1 to 120. So we have to first take an output of this particular range separately, as one video, from frame 1, to frame 120. And then for the transition effect, select the second camera, and you can move it along the timeline, to create some amount of overlap with the first camera. Let's say we start it from 100. We have to then take another output from frame number 100 to the end of the composition. It will have an overlap of this length with the first range. This will be our second video output. We have to then combine these two videos in a video sequence editor, like the one that comes with Blender, and add any transition effect that we want. Secondly, if you want to capture the same range in a scene from two different cameras, to show it from two different angles, you will make the first camera active, right from the beginning. And you will render the scene normally, for whatever range you need, you can render the entire composition as well. After that, you need to bring the second camera and make it the active camera, from whichever frame number you want, you can even start it from the very beginning and render the scene through this second camera. This way, you will get two videos of the same scene, from two different angles, and you can then mix them in any video editor. And you can also set any camera as the active camera, for two different time frames as well. Let us take this frame number 180. We can easily add another marker right here. Currently our first camera is selected, so we can bind it again to the current marker. The first camera is now active between frame number 1 and 120. Then the second camera will be active between frame number 120 and 180. And after 180, the first camera will again become active. You can add as many cameras as you need in a scene, and manage their operating frames in this way. You can directly take the combined output, if you don't need any special transition effect. So, that was a quick tutorial on how to use multiple cameras in a Blender scene. Please remember that the position and the angle of a camera are very important, because your audience will see only what your camera can see. That's all for today. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.